Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Board of Appeals hearing. Before we begin, let me introduce some members of town government that act as advisors to this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, counsel to the board. To his left is David Flynn, assistant planning director. To his left is Tom O'Brien, a planner in the planning department. To his left is Bill White, chief building inspector. Now let me tell you why you're here tonight. New York State statute requires that any town that adopts zoning must also have a Board of Appeals to act as a relief valve so that those persons aggrieved by strict application of the zoning ordinance can seek relief without the expense of going to court. Town Board can give Board of Appeals additional powers such as special exception approvals, site plan approvals, etc. In Smithtown, the Town Board has given this board authority regarding certificate of existing use and some special exception uses. The most common kind of application before the board are area variances. Area variants deal with dimensions such as lot area, frontage, height, setbacks, and parking spaces. New York State statute mandates the board must consider the following five criteria in area variances. When you come to the podium to present your application, you will need to address these five areas. They're posted here before for you. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be reduced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created. Number two, whether the applicant has other feasible alternatives. Number three, whether the variance is substantial. Number four, whether an adverse impact on the environment will be created. And number five, whether the alleged difficulty is self-created. The statute requires the board to balance the interest of the applicant and those of the neighborhood and community. The statute further requires that the board shall grant the minimum variance you shall deem necessary and adequate, and at the same time pr protect and preserve the character of the neighborhood and the health, safety, and welfare of the community. The board has the power to impose reasonable conditions for granting variances. Special exception variants are different than area variances. When we have a special exception be application before us, I will explain the difference. Regarding procedure, <clears throat> cases will be called in order they are advertised. When your case is called, please come forward, submit your affidavits and mailing receipts to Mr. O'Brien, and then you will be sworn in at the podium. And you will be given the opportunity to explain to the board why you need the variance. After the applicant is done speaking, all interested parties will be given an opportunity, to, an opportunity and only one opportunity to be heard. So please organize your thoughts, keep your remarks factual that are related to the case. Then I will ask the applicant to come back to the podium to answer your concerns. The board will then close the case and reserve decision. After all the hearings are closed, the board will review the cases and decide some of them. Others will be, review, be, will be reviewed at a later date. There are three ways to find out the re results of the case. One, you can wait until after the public hearing, but there's no guarantee that the board will act on your case tonight. Two, you can call the planning department tomorrow afternoon. And three, applicants can wait and be notified by mail. <clears throat> we do have many adjournments, so let me go over the adjournments with you, please. Case 16580, How, uh, Edward and Patricia Kamortek in 23 Loft Road, Smithtown. Was there anyone interested in that case? That has been adjourned to February 28th. The next case that is adjourned is case 16582, Mark Rick Arcati. Nine, 19 Arden uh, Lane, Comac. Was anybody interested in that case? That has been adjourned to January 24th. <clears throat> the next case that is adjourned is case 16591, James Presler, 50 Old Route 25A, Fort Salonga. Anyone interested in that case? That has been adjourned to January 24th. <clears throat> the next case is case 16531, DLJ Ventures, 
That's the Kings Park Garden Center. Anyone interested in that one? That has been adjourned to March 7th. And the last case that is adjourned is case 16590, Mobile Storage Group, 1158 Jericho Turnpike. Anyone interested in that? Okay, you all are. That's going to be adjourned to March 13th. All right. No, you cannot. Not without the applicant here. Excuse me? Will there be an extra mailing sent out to the primary address? Um, I, usually they just have to change the, um, the date. However, I think the ad is going to be changed. I'm not positive. If the ad is going to be changed, they will send out new letters. If it's not, it, just look at the posting at March 13th. Mr. Tremalkin, did you want any? Perhaps the uh, applicant here would like to know the reasons of why it's been adjourned. In the interim from filing the application to the present time, there was a new owner. The owner of the property has changed hands, so we're not allowed to present this application without the new owner signing off. And that's why we did that. Otherwise, we would have been doing it tonight. All right. Yes. I'm sorry. Is there a website that would be purchased that you could adjourn ahead of time? Um, I, usually not. Um, if they adjourn it ahead of time, yes. But if they have to adjourn it at the last minute, um, no. That's why I try to do it at the beginning of the meeting, and I apologize for the inconvenience. I'm very sorry. First case for tonight, case 16579, re-advertised, AMVI Realtor, 88 Terry Road, Smithtown. Location, southwest corner of Terry Road and North Avenue, Smithtown. Property zone, NB and R10. Request variance to reduce minimum front yard setback from 50 feet to zero for a proposed 9 feet by 11, 12 feet trellis and breezeway. Reduce the minimum front parking setback from six feet to zero, reduce the required parking from 16 to 10 spaces, reduce the required truck loading spaces from one to zero, reduce the front yard setback from 50 feet to 14 existing for a second floor addition, reduce the buffer adjacent to resident district from 10 <coughs> feet to zero. <clears throat> Good evening. May I have your name and address, please? Itai Vishnia, I-T-A-I. -I. Last name is Vishnia, V-I-S-H-N-I-A. Good. Address and your address, please? One Cumberland Path, Setoket, New York. Are you the app? Are you the... Uh... Oh, the address of the uh, property is 88 Terror Yes, I understand that. But now I know you're here the second time. Yeah. Are you a principal in this? Yes. Okay. The owner of the... Uh, you're uh, the owner. Yeah. <laughs> Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you so much. You want to tell us why you're here, or would you like uh, to say I'm actually to going to have John, John to say that to speak on behalf of me. Okay. Yes, do you have the affidavits now? I do have the <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, this is the new plan. Right here. Thank you. John Tassetta, T as in Tom, A, C as in Charlie, E, T, T, A. Your address? 6 Nat Warney Lane, N as in Nancy, A, D as in David, W, O, R, N, Y, Lane, Stony Brook, New York. Raise your right hand, please. 
Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, since our last meeting, uh, we've uh, <coughs> reinvestigated the parking and we've come up with a layout which we submitted to the planning earlier. I s assume you all have a copy of that. We do. Thank uh, you. We actually were able to fit in uh, two more spaces uh, with a, without uh, putting a new curb cut into, the, into North Avenue. And that's about it. I, we spoke to... Um, Environmental, uh, they apparently uh, had some concerns over uh, loading on, for, on the septic system, but I, I believe those concerns were addressed. Good. Okay. All right. Planning? Sure. Gentlemen. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too. <clears throat> Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next case, 16580, has been adjourned to February 28th. Next case is case 16581, Patricia and James Eckert. 8th Cornell Court, South Smithtown, location, east side of Cornell Co Court, South, south of Cornell Drive, Smithtown, property zone R10. Request variance to reduce the minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 2 for an ex existing shed. Reduce the total side yard from 28 feet to 16. Reduce accessory structure setback from 6 feet to 5 for an existing pool. Increase the maximum fence height from six feet to 10, three existing fences and retaining walls. Reduce the setback between fence and retaining walls from five feet to zero. Permit structural members of, of fence to face other lots existing. And your name, please. Hello. James Eckert. And your address, James. Eight Cornell Court South, Smithtown, 11787. Are you gonna speak? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. James, will you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, yeah, as far as the, the rear fence, the, that's, that was existing when we purchased the property, like almost 18 years ago. And the, the um, high fence on top of the <clears throat> retaining wall, the south fence, um, it was turned around. Originally, we were going to have it the uh, opposite side facing us, and uh, our neighbor suggested that we turn it around because it's behind, it's on top of the retaining wall. He has a fence and, and uh, shrubbery across, so he wouldn't be able to see it. And also, the shed is on the side, on the um, north side of the home, and the my neighbor there doesn't mind that that it's closer to his property than it should be. That's all. Um, that chain link fence is that your fence? The the I rear. The plan here. Yeah, at the rear. At the, on the side that's the next to your neighbor there. Uh, that side. On the. On the south side, mm -hmm. no, that's that's the uh, that's the neighbor's fence. And it's attached to the fence to your fence in the rear. No, it goes it goes behind my fence. That that fence uh, starts like in the street and goes all the way to the rear of his, both of our properties. Planning. Just one comment, Madam Chair. Um, 
for tall fence variances, the planning department's normally concerned on the uh, aggregate impact on the character of the residential districts. But in this situation, um, two of the fences, the ones that would normally be most impacting, are the ones that are not opaque. So they don't seem um, as bad as the one that, that is opaque. However, the, the opaque one, which is on the south property line, um, faces the applicant. He's the one that's impacted, not other people in the neighborhood. Gentlemen? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Is there, is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? <clears throat> hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next case, case 16582, has been adjourned to January 24th. Next case is case 16583, Peter Drafos, 12 Somerset Drive, Comac, location south side of Somerset Drive, east of Indian Head Road, property zone R10. Request variance to reduce the minimum rear yard from 50 feet to 48 for an existing 395 square foot sunroom. Reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to four. Reduce the total side yard from 28 feet to 21 for an existing 527 square foot deck. And your name, please? Peter Drehos. And your address, Peter? 12 Somerset Drive, Comac. Okay. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Would you like this gentleman to speak for you? Yes, John Gleason. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, John Gleason, architect, 336 6th Avenue, St. James. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, we're here for a uh, Bill Pryor condition at uh, Peter Drehos' property <laughs> on a Somerset Drive in Comac. Oh. Uh, there's a 390 foot uh, square foot sunroom in the rear of the house. We're asking relief for a uh, for a two foot variance, essentially from uh, 50 feet required to 48 feet. Um, I just wanted the board to take note that the rear yard adjoins a uh, recharge basin owned by the town of Smithtown, so there are no neighbors on the back of the house, only on the sides. Um, the deck on the side yard, we're asking for a reduction from 12 feet to four feet. Um, this may sound like a lot, but the, the majority of the deck on that side is eight inches above grade. It's almost flat to grade. Um, so it really doesn't impose uh, too much of an impact onto the neighbor uh, to the west side of the house. Uh, Really, no Im environmental impacts uh, noted on the property. The structures have been there, uh, the, especially the sunroom, for approximately 30 plus years. So, um, I reviewed the structure. Everything looks like it will meet the building code pending a uh, inspection from the building department. Uh, I'll ask the board if they have any questions at this time regarding the, the property. Planning? Nothing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gentlemen. No questions. No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Next case is case 16584. Call Veneciano. 220 Riviera Drive, Kings Park. Location, south side of Riviera Drive, west of Walnut Road, Kings Park. Property zone R10. Request certificate of existing use to permit two dwelling units on one lot. Proposed two dwelling unit, two dwellings. Variance to permit a prohibited use rear dwelling without separate frontage. 
Permit two one-family dwellings on one lot. Permit the required lot area, frontage, or yard for one building to be used for another building. Increase the maximum floor area ratio from 25% to 60%, 37% if the site did not have environmentally sensitive land. Increase the maximum paving in the front yard from 25% to 35%. Permit environmentally sensitive land, flood hazard zone, high ground water zone, and land less than 100 feet to surface water to be altered. Reduce setback from a wetland, natural surface water, and significant wildlife habitat from 100 feet to 86 feet. Permit a structure, driveways, to be altered in a flood hazard zone. Reduce rear yard from 35 feet to four existing. Reduce retaining wall setback from six feet to zero existing. Reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 17. Good evening, Donald King, 75 East Main Street, Kings Park, New York. Uh, I'd like to present to you first a photo of the original house on the property and it shows you a view from the front and a view from the rear overlooking the river. And this uh, house was own, owned by Peter Hildebrand, and it burned down. But I, I think it's important that the board look at this for the size of the original structure that was here. You want to look at this and then pass it down this way, please? Thank you so much. It's enormous. In 1999, under case, VZA case number 12636, uh, Dr. Ziri hired me, and I got approval for the burned down house that, that's in that photo. It was burned down, and the town was kind enough, or the Zoning Board of Appeals at that time was kind enough to give me um, a variance uh, to expand a non-conforming use, which is important, to construct a 1,615-square-foot residence and maintain a 968-square-foot detached garage, which is currently on the property and still there. And I'd like to hand up, if I may, the approval on case number 12636, and it'll show to the board um, what was granted by the ZBA at that time. <clears throat> what happened with the, the prior approval, it expired, and Vinny came in at that time uh, under case number 13488, and he, too, got an approval on November 13, 2001. <clears throat> and again, it was a certificate of existing use. And all of the variances were granted to be able to build a house. Um, at that time, <clears throat> I'm going to hand up to you the decision that approved that and it essentially approved it with some other conditions. Um, and if you take a look at that, you can do a comparison of what I got the first time and what Vinny got the second time. Unfortunately, Butch and his son were unable to build a house and the permits, or it expired, so I'm back here again uh, asking for the relief that's shown as requested in the uh, reading by the chair lady of this enormous application. It appears like it, but wh what it comes down to really is to b rebuild that house that burned down and has been approved two times by this board. And when you take a look at that, uh, and also I, I'm going to hand up to you the LERP approval from planning that Allison worked very hard on to 
get us to allow us to rebuild within the LERP, which has reduced the size of the house a little bit. But, and I know that the board can't go beyond what the LERP allows, but if you look at the LERP approval and the prior approvals, I think you could come up with the numbers that Allison worked very hard on to uh, grant this application so that they could rebuild a house. Since we don't have the health department approval and we don't have CEQA, the board has time to go down and take a look. And, and I would ask you to please do that. I'd like each and every board member to go down because it's important to understand the character of the neighborhood there. <clears throat> if you look at Hildebrand's enormous house, and I, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but let me see if I can get it. Um, we're allowed to have um, 2,496 square feet there. And we've got the, the cottage in the back that's been expanded upon, and that's existing at 1,264 square feet. And we'd like to build a 1,232 square foot new home on the property. So when you go down and you look at the house, or the property, it's a magnificent piece of property overlooking the river. If you look to the left, you're going to see what was the old bar in San Remo. It was, it was a bar, among other things, and then it became a fish store. And that, and that building occupies almost the entire lot, completely. I don't know if there's, there's a little bit of a front yard where they used to park the cars f to go into the fish store and the bar, but that house is to the, immediately to the left, and it takes up the whole property. If you go to the right of the property, you'll notice that there's an A-frame with a cottage. The house immediately to the right has a cottage. If you go one more house to the right, there's a house with a cottage. If you go one more house to the right, there's a legal two-family with a, a long cottage in the front. And I believe that all of those to the immediate right are, <coughs> are legal. Uh, if you go then two or three houses down, you come to the old river's edge, which was originally Rudy's Rest. And I got that approved. Uh, it was a kind of transient seven, eight rooms upstairs in a bar. And I got that approved years ago for a three family. So if you look at the character of the neighborhood, the immediate character, this is no more than that which is now there. And I think if you take a look at it, you might agree with me. I'd like to hand up the LERP, if I may, because I think that's important um, with respect to what the board ultimately does. Butch went out, Butch Veneziano went out, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to hand up a letter. He went out and looked at, at uh, similar properties within a mile and a half of this property, in a, which may include the ones I've already discussed with you. And uh, there were 15 properties observed, and he, he said he can testify that there were 20 dwellings on these 15 properties. So San Remo. To my mind, though it's zoned R10, has <clears throat> evolved because I don't know how many Vinny got, but I know that I have over 100 or more houses approved on undersized lots. So if it's one, if you want to call it R10, you can do that. But effectively, it's evolved into something else than an R10 district. There's a tremendous number of smaller lots. And I know that the chair lady is going to yell at me, but um, I always bring up, and I know the board doesn't have any jurisdiction over this, but San Remo is covered with illegal two, three, four, and five family dwellings. Nothing is done about it. So when a couple of guys come in, and I know the board has nothing to do with it, but I think you yeah. have to take it into, put it in your mind a little bit that here's a guy that wants to build what was there, 
that burned down and was approved by this board two times and is approved under the LERP. And I think at the very least, if you take into account the immediate houses right around the place and the smaller lot sizes throughout San Remo and the illegals, and I always say try driving down there at night. It's like going to the auto mall. There's so many cars parked outside the place, which is the town's business. But when a guy tries to do the right thing, I, should, I don't think he should take it in the throat. I'd like to hand this one over. You'll recall if years ago I went in on the, uh, with respect to the CEU, I went in on the Meadow Road Deli. <clears throat> and that was, I believe, an application for a certificate of existing use. And the use had expired, and the, the, this board was kind enough to grant it because there was never any intent to abandon the certificate of existing use. It's in the ordinance, and I have the section, okay. which I'll hand up to the board, and we, te we testified, or there was testimony that, I don't know if it was close, four to six years, and this board granted it because there was never any intent to abandon it. I'm telling you that there has never been an intent by Butcher, his son, to abandon this because they've lived, this cottage has been occupied, and now they're back here trying to resolve it. But in their mind, there was never any intent to abandon. So I'd like you to take that, if you don't mind, into account. And the particular section I'm talking about is, uh, hold on a second. 322-77, and I'm going to hand that section on CEUs up here. Now, is this house going to produce an undesirable change in the character in the neighborhood? No way. I live down the block. It's not going to affect me. It's going to fit in with those three or four houses to the right, the three-family house, the large fish store and bar to the left. If you go up Walnut, you'll see that there's, as you go up Walnut on the left, if you have a chance to look, there's a couple of houses on one lot up there. This is going to enhance San Remo. And it's on the river. It's not a big house, even when combined with the cottage that what is a, was approved by this board and slightly expanded. Can the benefit be achieved by some other method? No way. <clears throat> we need the variance. Is it substantial? Not when you look at all of San Remo, it is not. Uh, the, uh, it's staggering what's down there, and this fits right in. Uh, will it have an adverse effect on the environment? No, it will not. It's been approved two times. It meets the LERP. We're going to get through the DEC, and we're going to get a CEQA. Is it self-created? No, they didn't burn the house down. They got approvals. They were just unable to act on it. So I'd ask you to consider all of this when you look at this application. Thank Can you. I just ask you the, the size of the house again, please? 1,232 square feet, I believe, is the size that the we were asking for more. But because of the uh, expansion to the, the LERP requirements that we can't exceed it that Allison, I think that's the number that Allison came up with. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Planning? Just, just a few comments. Um, I would say, uh, in fairness, I think Mr. King's presentation was clear. Um, I think it was mostly accurate, and I think that it was rather convincing. Um, I would ask the board to consider uh, two things. One is, is that from a planning standpoint, and the second thing is the legal issue. If this were only a variance and not a certificate of existing use, I think it would be fair to say that um, allowing houses at that density would have an impact on the river. The river has been studied to death, and study after study says that one of the main reasons it's polluted is the uh, lack of sewers and the density of population in San Remo and adding to it isn't good. However, um, if the board uh, finds that the certificate of existing use should be in issued, then uh, Mr. Veneziano's rights shouldn't be trampled on in the name of the many. 
if you understand what I mean. It mm -hmm. just, it's more important um, that people's rights are protected um, from, from the community uh, than for the community to prevail and someone to take it on the chin. Um, two, two places where I part company with Mr. King. One is, is that, um, as you know, the planning department uh, has done two studies of San Remo. Um, and uh, the average lot area per family is around 9,500 square feet. It's pretty close to the R10 uh, requirement. Uh, however, I would admit to Mr. King that this particular part of this particular block probably has more than its share um, of multiple uh, family dwellings. Um, the second thing is, is that the, the LWRP that we wrote, uh, that Allison wrote, but um, legally it's the planning director's prerogative to, to uh, sign it and send it, um, the planning department's letter. It's predicated on the fact that the, the CEU is issued, because if it's not issued, the proposal would not be consistent with the waterfront program, because it's too dense. However, if it's grandfathered in, to use the vernacular, then the LWRP doesn't apply to the certificate of existing use, but it does apply to the half dozen or so other variances that are in the notice. Did you follow that? In other words, like, if there's no CEU and it's only a variance, Would then, not it's, be approved. then it's not consistent with the waterfront program. Mm -hmm. If the board determines that there should be a certificate of existing use issued, um, then the waterfront program doesn't apply to the certificate of existing use, but to the other variances. And I think what Mr. King said, uh, the essence is correct. There was a house uh, and, a, and a detached garage with an apartment above it, apparently totaling about 2,500 square feet or so. I'm not sure of the exact number, but somewhere around there. And it seems that it's um, proper, if the board determines that the use wasn't abandoned, that the total floor area be the same as what existed in 1997 or whatever it was that before the fire. So the fact that they made the garage a little bit bigger means that if you find <coughs> that there should be two homes here, that the original main house should be a little bit smaller so that when all is said and done, the total floor area isn't smaller or larger than what existed if a fire hadn't occurred. Because that, because that uh, original house was um, quite enormous. But we're not looking to overdo it here. We're just looking to get this, uh, this house approved. The only other thing I would disagree with, Dave, is the planning study on what San Remo is. If you take into account the illegals, probably the average lot size down there is 800 square feet. Thank you. Wait a minute. Don't leave, Mr. King. Is there, does anyone else have any questions, gentlemen? Now it's our first meeting of the year. We'll take it easy on Don. <laughs> Pardon me? First meeting of the year. We'll take it easy on you. Yeah, it's a new attorney, too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Okay. Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. It's really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. You want this amendment? Okay. <clears throat> Next case is case 16585 Chad Mathon, 43 Rose Street, Smithtown. Location, northwest corner of Rose Street and Norton Drive, Smithtown, property zone R21. <coughs> Request variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 50 feet to 48, 46, I'm sorry, 50 feet to 46. Proposed 55 square foot porch. Reduce the minimum front yard setback from 50 feet to 41 for a proposed 509 square foot first floor addition. Reduce the minimum side yard setback from 16 feet to 12 for an existing 75 square foot first floor addition.
Hello, may I have your name, please? Uh, Chad Mathon. And your address, Chad? 43 Rose Street, Smithtown. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Do you want to tell us why you're here, please? I'm here for uh, expanding. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is expanding my living space, uh, 509 square feet, um, taking my bedrooms and making my children's bedrooms a little bit larger so they actually kind of do conform to today's standards as far as bedroom size. Right now, the, I guess the house was built in 1960, so the bedrooms are a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm expanding that, adding in a, a bathroom and a couple closets for the children as well. Should I go down my list? It would be excellent. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Good. okay. Um, undesirable change to the neighborhood. I don't feel it's an undesirable change to the neighborhood. Um, the actual front curb appeal is going to be improved. Um, better reverse gables, better roof line. Right now the house is a little boxy, so we're going to work that into it. Um, second one, whether it's a different method. Um, really, that was the only method that we could do to expand the house in, in the right way and really keep it as a minimal, um, in, in, I guess, pressure on the, the house. We're going to try to live in there while the extension is being added. Um, it, I don't feel it's really substantial. Not asking for a lot. One of the challenges that we have is it's a corner plot, so I'm dealing with two frontal zones, and that makes it a little difficult because the house is on an angle. I guess you guys have the pictures in front of you. Yes, we do. So that, that puts a bit of a challenge trying to position it. Um, I worked with the architect a little bit to kind of come up with a design that would stay you within the this? boundaries as best as possible and thing. not look lopsided. Otherwise, the house might look a little lopsided. So that's kind of why I'm here. Um, let's see. I don't believe there's any uh, real environmental impact. And the challenge wasn't self-created because the house was built that way on an angle. And I'm trying to make it look nice and reasonable for my neighbors. Okay. Okay. Planning? No comments, thank you. Gentlemen? No. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. <clears throat> may, I have, may I have your name, please, and spell your last name? Yes. First name is Joseph, last name is Fiella, that's spelt, that is in Frank, A-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A. I live at 40 Rose Street, Smithtown. All right, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, I live across the street from the Maythons. I've known them since uh, 2004. Uh, they have three kids, a uh, growing family. Uh, they, you know, they need the space. Uh, they'd like to stay in the house uh, to accommodate their family, especially since they put a lot into it already. I know that everything that they've done in that house so far has been done to the nines. I mean, it's a nice house, nice property. And uh, I have no doubt that this addition is going to look, uh, you know, just as nice. And, um, you know, quite frankly, to that end, I, I don't see it as a problem, you know, me across the street looking at the house. Um, and I hope that you uh, approve this for them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Ready, move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> okay. Next case is case 16586, Robert uh, Lindoff. Liner. Four Kings Park Road, Comac. Location, west side of Kings Park Road, a south of Elder Drive, Comac, property zone R10. Request variance to increase the maximum paving in the front yard from 25% to 55%, and in the side yard to 95% existing. Reduce the rear yard setback from six feet to four for an existing shed. Reduce the side yard setback from 12 feet to 5 for an existing shed. 
reduced the total side yard setback from 28 feet to 23, reduced the minimum setback to lot lines from three feet to zero for an existing retaining wall. And your name and address, please. My name is Robert, last name is L-Y-N-A-G-H, and I reside at 4 Kings Park Road in Comac. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You want to tell us uh, why you're here? Okay, I'm here for a variance, um, which is uh, just stated, and um, we'll address them in order. <coughs> we want to increase the P. These are built prior. Right. So Use the, the, the mic, please, as much uh, as you can. Okay. And, and it will lift up the mic. Lift it up. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, the um, driveway was uh, built rather large because we live um, adjacent and across from two commercial properties and there's a fire hydrant in front of the uh, house so there's no parking anywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was um, done with approval for a curb cut um, a few years ago from the town. We got a curb cut, I believe it was 29 feet. And um, that's, you know, the way we went with that driveway so we could have safe um, parking, parking access and egress out of the property. The, um, the side yard, <clears throat> excuse me, was, um, um, you know, paved and um, we originally had a plan to put a separate garage that would, would go back there and that was the mm -hmm. reason for that. That is not going to be built anymore so I really can't say anything um, about the side yard. And the, sh the sheds with the setbacks, uh, both sheds are done tasteful. One of them had an existing um, 10 by 12 shed, which was taken down, and the new smaller shed was put in the same spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the side shed, the side yard shed, is next to the um, Jericho Turnpike Hess gas station, and that was built um, a little rather small small impact um, just because I didn't want to see anything big there. And that is a um, 10 and a half by five foot shed. And everything was done tasteful in, in that respect. And, and then we have the, um, the, the, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, the retaining walls, which if, if you could see the pictures, um, the way the, the lot was um, pitched, from rear towards the house, it was just one angle. And we needed to push the, the yard back to create level surfaces for the pool, excuse me, which created an upper level. So we needed to run that wall right to the, I guess, to the end of the lot line. And there was retaining walls there prior, but they were falling apart. And they weren't as high because we cut into the yard to create two levels to have a level for the pool and of course then the grade of the yard to, to just meet the, the existing grade of the yard. <clears throat> um, we, we have no, um, I don't think we have any opposition from any neighbors, which we only basically have one side neighbor and we have um, basically one rear neighbor. And um, I guess from the pictures you could see that it, 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 it is done, I think, correctly. It's definitely done to code uh, as far as, you know, safety and the, the way the, the, the structures were built. And I think um, that, you know, it, it, it is a definitely an asset to, to the way that, uh, you know, the neighborhood looks and, and, and how it's done. So, uh, Just to let you know that the board members, most of the board members do visit the site. Okay. Okay. So, so you've seen it? Yes, we were okay. there yesterday. Right. Oh, thank you. Did you, did you go into the backyard? We looked in the back, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't look as good in the winter as it does in the summer. <laughs> All right. Uh, planning? Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen. No, no. No, no question. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good night. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Ready, move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next case is case 16587, Robin and Allison Brennan. 
17 Smithtown Crescent, Smithtown location, west side of Smithtown Crescent, west of Roosevelt Drive, Smithtown, properties zoned R10S. <coughs> Request variance to reduce the retaining wall setback from four feet to zero. Reduce the setback between fence and top of the retaining wall from four feet to zero. Increase the combined height of retaining wall and fence from six feet to 10 feet. Existing retaining wall and proposed fence. Good evening, Madam Chairman, <clears throat> members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicants. I've submitted the affidavits of posting and mailing uh, to David Flynn. Before I get started tonight, I'd like to make clarification for the record. Don King did many more small lot variances <laughs> than I did because I was in high school when he started uh, doing these. So for the record, uh, he's got me beat. He's not here to defend himself. I know that. <laughs> um, my clients are a young couple. They purchased the house. They want to live and, and stay in Smithtown. And, and there was a, a number of things that they had to do in order to uh, uh, actually make the backyard safe. Um, uh, they hired a landscaper, and uh, I think what happened was, at least from the landscaper's uh, perspective, uh, he wasn't familiar with the new retaining wall rules, uh, as are a lot of people, because I know this board probably gets at least one or two uh, retaining wall variances at a meeting. The last gentleman here had uh, a similar type situation. In any event, um, um, the landscaper puts up the wall, uh, the wall is on the line, and um, obviously uh, we're here asking for a, a variance because under the new code, uh, the wall has to be stepped back, uh, basically the height of the wall uh, from the property line. This wasn't done. You have a survey before you. You also have uh, uh, <coughs> photographs that we submitted uh, and I know you went to the property mm -hmm. um, uh, to personally view it. Um, one of the things, well, a couple of things I'd like to do. i first like to submit um, an engineering report uh, uh, that was uh, done uh, by my client's engineer, Thomas uh, Filizola, uh, which indicates that the wall is structurally safe and there is And I believe that's one of the concerns that engineering always has uh, with built prior walls because they don't have an opportunity to review uh, a permit application beforehand. Um, the next thing I'd like to submit are, I probably should have done it at the same time, are three letters from the neighbors uh, surrounding the property. And each one of the neighbors has indicated Uh, construction of the retaining wall and uh, the request uh, to install these six foot high uh, fences. In fact, they basically say it would be an improvement to their property too. Now, although my clients uh, presently don't have children, um, I'm sure that in the future they'll have children. Uh, neighbors to the right or the left have children and certainly they want to protect the property uh, or protect the children from their swimming <laughs> pool, uh, and you can't do that uh, without a fence. Um, the, um, I, I said before that the structure is safe. You do have the, um, uh, the report uh, from uh, the engineer, and that was sent to uh, Mark Riley. We don't feel that this will have an undesirable change in the character of the area. In that particular area, the, the ground does slope back from the backyard down uh, to the neighbors. And um, <clears throat> as Mr. Brennan uh, reminded me, it's probably safer now with the retaining wall uh, than it was when it was a, a severe slope. Uh, the, uh, whether the benefit could be achieved by some other method, well, I guess you could have uh, put the retaining wall back three feet 
uh, in this type of uh, property. I believe it's an R10. It's a small piece of property, and, and uh, with the swimming pool there, um, they need every uh, inch of, or foot that they can accomplish. They only have 22 feet from the, uh, uh, the swimming pool to the, uh, to the property line in the rear. Um, whether the uh, requested area variance is substantial. Well, it's not really substantial when you consider the size of the, of the property, uh, what's being done there, um, uh, not only for the beautification of the property, but for the uh, safety of, of uh, the Brennans and also um, to protect uh, the community, especially children, um, because there is a swimming pool there. Um, whether the, the uh, proposed variance will have an adverse effect on the environment, well, we all know it doesn't probably every 10th house has a swimming pool and generally doesn't have any effect on, on, on the environment. Um, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created to the extent that the, uh, <clears throat> the Brennans are new homeowners and, and uh, really not aware of uh, the ordinances in town and they hired someone uh, to, uh, to do the work. Uh, yeah, I guess they could have gotten a permit first. They didn't, but it was through um, uh, ignorance, if you will, not the fact that they wanted to do anything um, on purpose. So we asked the board for its favorable consideration. Uh, if you looked at the property, you can see it's in the process of being beautified uh, little by little. And um, if the board has any questions, I have Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Brennan here tonight. Thank you. Planning? Madam Chair, we have uh, two recommendations or two comments. They're sort of in the bad news, good news categories. Uh, in the first instance, um, having basically looking at a 10 foot high combination fence and wall is I think fair to say not appealing to most homeowners, home, most residents. Um, and we would encourage um, someone to use maybe a four foot fence on top of the wall because the, in the, in the back because from a privacy standpoint, the neighbor behind is downhill. From the good news standpoint is that if the variants were granted, uh, that neighbor is much further away than normal. It, usually there's a rear yard of say 50 feet. I didn't measure it, but it looked like it was double that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the neighbors in the middle of the left saying they have no objection uh, to the wall and the fence. Gentlemen? No, thank you. No issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is very moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next case is case 16588, um, the Samia, I don't have the person's first name. Let me have your first name. First name's Imtiaz, I spell I-M-T-I-A-Z. Last name is Vesamia, V-E-S-A-M-I-A. Oh, Okay. At um, 61 Mayflower Avenue, Smithtown, location. East side of Mayflower Avenue, north of Hawthorne Drive, Smithtown, property zone R10, request variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 40 feet, 25 existing, to 20 for an existing 50 square foot portico. Correct. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. What do you need? 
Did you get his first and last name? 61 Mayflower Avenue, yeah. Smithtown, New York, 11789. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, basically, I purchased uh, the, the house in October 2011, and it seemed that there was no variance, for, sorry, there was no CO for the front portico. Um, there's a number of houses which have front porticos, porches on that road, hence I'm subsequently legalizing the porch. Okay. It's, 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 it's almost as simple as that. I, I'm happy to go through. Does it confirm to the area? Yes. I've got a picture of my neighbor's portico, which is almost four times as larger than mine. Hopefully, I'm not getting them into trouble here. Um, was it self-created? Absolutely not. Well, it is self-created because it, it, it was built and you're responsible, you know. Yes. So. But all right. Um, I, I do recognize, uh, recognize the gentleman um, in the variance department. They did try to help to see if there was aerial pictures. Okay. Because I believe in town of Smithtown, you took, well, th some genius had um, the, um, the prior thought of taking pictures way back in the 20s, I believe. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, it wasn't clear or there wasn't pictures of the front portico. All right. That's fine. Planning? I, I think actually the photograph was too blurry to tell. It looked like there was a portico there, but it, we couldn't confirm it. Oh. Um, I think it's fair to say, if you look at the photographs, that most residents would think that the portico adds to the character of the street. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. Oh, be careful. You got to keep, you got to come to the microphone. I'm sorry. And I have to take your name and address. John LaRocca, L-A-R-O-C-C-A. -C -C -A. Uh, uh, use the microphone. Hello. Okay. What's your address? 58 Mayflower Avenue, right okay. adjacent of this All property. Right. All right, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. Okay. I don't see nothing wrong with that, the man doing what he's doing now. Okay. So I'm not opposing anything. So I agree with him, whatever he's doing. He's improving it. It's fine. Thank That's you it. so okay? much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is there any moved and second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Next case is case 16589, Frank Tan Greedy, uh, 209 Box Drive, East Midtown. Oh, it's not. It's, it's, is it, wait a minute. It's Bow, right? Okay, I'm sorry. This is it's Bow Drive East, Smithtown. Location? You yeah, need to correct those. It's southwest corner of Bow Drive East. Yes. And uh, Stephen Place, Smithtown. Yes. Property zone R15. Request variance reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to zero on Stephen Place. Reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to 20 on Bow Drive East for an existing six-foot fence. Raise your right hand, please. Well, give me your name and your address. Uh, it's Frank Tangretti, uh, 209 Bow Drive East, Midtown, New York. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, I was uh, getting a uh, pool permit, and when the inspector was there, he, he advised me I needed a variance for the fence. And that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, I think that, what do you call it? I don't know if we're approving it or not improving it, but I think planning, did, I, I, did you bring it up to them that he needs a five foot section? Good yes, or? yes, yeah. I called him um, and uh, somehow it escaped our attention that there's about a four or five foot corner section of fence that if it stays is in violation of a different section of the zoning ordinance, the corner clearance triangle. But aside from that, um, I think from the character of the area, the, I think the fence 
doesn't offend the character of the area. Okay. E even that may not offend the character of the area, but it, it's in the corner clearance triangle. Right. So you realize you're going to have to move it anyway. What, one section of it? One. About five feet, I think. Four feet. I, it would have to be measured to determine what's within a, a triangle that's created by the center lines of the two roads and going out 75 feet in both directions, and then it'll cut across your lawn, and you know, this imaginary triangle, and it just clips your fence by a few feet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Any questions, gentlemen? No. <clears throat> Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Barely moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, right. Let's see. Okay. Case 16591 has been adjourned to 124, January 24th. Oh, I, wait a minute. I better go back to. Um, Case 16590, that's the mobile storage group. That's been adjourned to March 13th. Okay, you might be, you're with me now? Yes. Yes. Well, I announced at the beginning of the meeting, I'm sorry that you came in late. Yeah. March 13th, and we explained to you, to the people at the board, the reason it's adjourned is there is a new ownership. Can you testify? No, you cannot. You can't testify until the attorney's here and the new owner's here, but they, they really have to ha re um, advertise it. I'm not uh, absolutely sure that uh, it's going to be the same variances. All right? So. Um, if there is not, if the, uh, if the um, notice is the same, it will not be sent out. It will be reposted with the, n with the correct date on it, March. If they have to re-advertise it, am I correct? The town does. If the town has to re-advertise it, then they'll send out new notices. All right? But you what? might want to just emphasize that as of tonight, it's March 13th. Right, yes. If right now, it's March now. 13th. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. We have been there many times. Thank you. I was there again yesterday. Thank you. Thank you so much. March 13th. And the one before that is March 6th? No. There's no March 6th. What? Oh, yeah, I said March 7th, but it's tw March 27th. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, March 27th. All right, so we'll go back. Thank you. All right, let's we go back. Case 16590 is adjourned to March 13th. Case 16591 is adjourned to January 24th. The case 16531, which is the Kings Park Garden Center, has been adjourned to March 27th. All right? That concludes our hearings for tonight. Thank you so much.